This is the beautiful continent of Africa. We are currently located in Madagascar, an island country to the southeast of mainland Africa. We started our journey off in Antananarivo. We took a 15 hour bus ride from Tana to Mahajunga, where we have been for the last two weeks. Mahajunga is known for its beautiful beaches, its outside markets, its good food, great vibe, and beautiful people. Everything is not all glitz and glamour, but Mahajunga's appeal is in the heart and spirit of the people. From tuk tuk to human carriage rides, there's a freeness here that can liberate the soul. Mahajunga is a must see when visiting Madagascar. You should love family, it's the unapologetic nomad. This King Nomad underscore 44 on Instagram, aka Be Lucky. And I'm with the lovely wife, as you can see. It's peace and love. Thank yeah. you for tuning in, checking us out. Another beautiful day in Mahajunga, Madagascar. All right. And we got Ayla and... also in the building. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, how are you? We're yeah. with Mama Lisa here. Hello. In Madagascar. Yes. So, uh, Mama Lisa, how long have you been here? Almost five years. Almost five years. So came here five years ago with the Peace Corps. I did two years of service with the Peace Corps, and then I left, moved to Belize for nine months. But I didn't like Belize at all, and I really missed Mad Madagascar. So I came back in 2020, and so I've been here for since. So, Mama Lisa, since you've been here in Madagascar, you have done a lot. Where are we on our way to? We're going to visit the halfway house that I'm building. Oh, nice. You're right. I have done a lot, but I haven't done it alone. Okay. I've had so many very kind and extremely generous friends, basically my Facebook family, who have been donating so that we can build this house for kids who live in the orphanage. Mm. Who age out. They're too old. Often it will keep them until they're 18, and with some exceptions till 20, but there's no guarantee. And the orphanage has in the past kicked two 20-year-old girls out on the street without a moment's notice because they were too old. Oh. So to prevent a terrible situation from happening again, we decided to build a two-unit cottage. Each cottage will hold two to three adults and the idea is it's a transitional way for them to live on their own while they're living in a commune surrounded by supportive people who will help them get the skills they need so within two years they can move out get their own place and then we can move somebody else in so the halfway house as i said i didn't do it alone mm. it hadn't been for all my kind donors in the u.s oh my god i couldn't have done it man that's something so we get a lot of questions coming from uh, like a lot of our subscribers and members. And one question that keeps coming up is, what is the cost of living out here in Madagascar? Madagascar has always been one of the world's poorest nations. As a result, the cost of living here is extremely low. I'm living on about $900 U.S. per month. Okay. That pays my rent, my utilities, my transportation, my food entertainment, um, uh, medical, everything. And so the, my Social Security is just under 2000 so the rest of that money I'm able to put into my nonprofit to helping kids, to helping children. Uh, there's uh, several students at the University of uh, Mashenga right now. I'm paying their tuition. Um, a friend of mine needed a, a new laptop. I bought it for him. He's paying me back every month. Um, I'm doing a lot for a lot of people. I've got three special needs kids that I've enrolled into a special needs school. Um, not only supporting them in terms of their tuition, but getting them to a, a neurologist. None of these kids had ever seen a neurologist before. And in some of the cases, it's too late to really make a major change in their cognitive abilities. But there are minor things that we can do that will improve their life and give them a better opportunity of being able to live an independent life as an adult. Oh. So that's one of the things we're, we're doing. Mm. Yeah. And you're also doing some teaching here. Can you tell us about that? <laughs> okay, well, I was an English teacher when I worked for Peace Corps. When I volunteered for Peace Corps, rather. And I had never taught English. Really, I taught a little bit of English, but I was a computer nerd for 30 years. Uh. So when you first get to country, the first six weeks, they're teaching you the language. 
and in the next six weeks they're teaching you how to teach yoga. So I struggled terribly in the beginning. Um, I was used to working with adults, uh -huh. but working with kids was so challenging and so rewarding. At one point, I had 65 10th graders. Oh, my class. goodness. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I was new to the region. I had, I had just moved there from, from here, didn't know the dialect, and those kids rode me hard for about two weeks oh. until I finally got my, you know, shit together, like, okay, <laughs> now. You know, uh -huh. y'all that want to be here, that's fine. Y'all that don't, you can leave because I'm not going to have you disrupting my class. And <laughs> once I set down the rules, uh -huh. it was all good. Cool. Oh, yeah, I, was, yeah. I tried locking them in, you know, because there was a back door and they would always sneak out the back door. Oh. So I used my bike lock to lock that door. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> you don't want to be here. Bye. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> and when I put it to him like that, they're like, she doesn't care if we leave. I don't really care. <laughs> you know, I got enough by my hands full of when they saw that, then they re started to respect me. Mm. You know, sometimes with the kids, you just got to come down. Yeah. So anyway, um, so now, even though I'm officially retired, I get a lot of requests to teach English. Ah. And I was teaching English here at the university when I first got back here in 2020, and I was teaching in an elementary school uh -huh. across the street from where I was living. Okay. But then COVID happened. And so, you know, we shut down our borders for almost two years. Um, I was extremely concerned about getting COVID because of my age and because I'd lost so many friends and family members to COVID back in the States. So I stopped teaching altogether. Mm. But recently I've been given an opportunity to do an online course for a private client okay. with their employees. And so I'm doing that and the money for that is just going right into my nonprofit. Yeah. So it's great. Everything's going into mamalisacares.org. Nice. Mama Lisa, L-E-E-Z-A, mamalisacares.org. Nice. Very interesting. Mm. So you mentioned that uh, Madagascar is the poorest country, one on of the, the poorest on the countries planet. on the planet, and America is one of the richest countries. Why would you want to move to a poor country outside of the great United States of America? <laughs> Two reasons. <laughs> no systemic racism. Ah. Mm. And... He's my oldest host brother. Oh, and you see him look more like his mother. Than his <laughs> and this is the lovely home he's building for him oh, and his wow. wife. His wife is ah, over cool. there. <laughs> he's my boyfriend, my super cool. Oh. Oh. Is joining the Peace Corps at like an older age, are, are there any benefits to that? Is it is it good or is it how how would you recommend somebody doing that? as a senior or seasoned uh, person joining the Peace Corps. Okay, um, the Peace Corps.